and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube. For some Gruel Henge, we're going to play this in the standard metagame challenge that's just this weekend. Uh, today is the last day for the standard metagame challenge. That's right, my hands are right here, Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawkeye's coming over to say hi. Um, so we're going to play a couple more decks in there. We got two donation decks that we're going to play third and fourth. What? Why are you biting me? <laughs> All right, so we're going to play the donation decks third and fourth, and we're going to play a couple of decks in the metagame challenge. This was a, a pretty popular YouTube video that we played, uh, that we played it, I don't know, a week or two ago. Gruel Henge here, it, it did pretty well. I know y'all on YouTube were uh, talking about how you really like the deck, and um, saw a lot of people trying the deck out also for themselves, and that's always a good sign that people really like the deck if people are playing it themselves on Arena. So we're going to play it um, here in the metagame challenge now. You know, give it a, a good challenge and see how it does. Metagame challenge is an event where you play until you either win seven, and you win tons and tons of packs if you get there, or lose once. If you lose once, you're out. Um, all right, so what we're going to be doing here is... Uh, Again, Gruel Henge. I made a couple of small changes. I I really wanted a fourth Domri's Ambush in here. So we got a fourth one in. And I couldn't really think of like what to take out from the main deck for it. So we had two Once Upon a Times before. I just simply took out one of those Once Upon a Times for the other Ambush. We'll kind of see how that goes there. I, I, thought, I definitely thought about cutting one of these two mana accelerants. But I think that's a real strength of the deck is having the eight two mana accelerants. I think we basically always want to have these every single game. I know if we cut one and keep once upon a time, it's still kind of likely that we have them. But just having like the actual creatures is good, if, of course, with the Great Henge. Really like having the Great Henge tap add two green mana so we can immediately play these things also. And of course, Incubation Druid works really well with the Great Henge and with Grum Goalie being a 1-3 where it can add a lot of mana. Also, these Incubation Druid and Paradise Druids help fix our mana because, as you can see here, we got triple green with Vivian, triple red with Cavalier of Flame. That can be pretty rough together, and so I like having these to uh, be able to help us out in that respect also. Um, I'm, we had three Grum Goalie, three Spellbreaker. I'm going to go with the fourth Spellbreaker over the third Grum Goalie. We'll kind of see how that goes. Spellbreaker, really like that with the haste and everything. Um, but Grum Goalie looked pretty strong the last time we played this deck, too. And then uh, sideboard, we had we had three red ley lines, which are just not necessary at all. And instead, I'm putting in a Vivian, give us a little bit of extra card advantage in games that we need it. A Cinder Vines, be able to blow up um, a Fires of Invention, and just a fourth Veil of Summer. Y'all know how good Veil of Summer is, so I'm just getting a fourth one there. Um, oh yeah, we used these Teferi sleeves last time. Let's use let's use Vivian sleeves. Okay, um, so that's our deck. That's Gruel Henge. Uh, I guess if if you don't really know, like kind of the strength of our deck, of course, is the Great Henge. Like we're trying to get this thing out here and have this win the late games. Like that's really what we're trying to do. But Cavalier Flame was just awesome last time. This card was incredible because we it gets to filter our hand. You know, we get to discard a bunch of extra lands, look for the Great Henge, and all that kind of stuff. But then it. Uh, it's the kind of card that uh, just kills people really quickly. That first ability, giving all of our creatures haste, is awesome. Because in <clears throat> the Great Henge, usually you have a lot of extra mana when you have the Great Henge, because you're drawing a bunch of extra cards. And, you know, we have these mana creatures. So usually we have, like, a whole lot of mana in the deck. And we get to play Cavalier, activate it. You know, pumping it up a bunch is obviously really good with Questing Beast, really good with, with Spellbreaker, with the Trample. You know, works well with Vivian. I don't know. It's just a, a good aggressive shell here. Let's, let's give this deck a try. Um, I... <clears throat> Fungo, I, I actually... I mean, I I have the exact opposite opinion uh, of the Royal Scions. I absolutely love the Royal Scions there. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really want to take them out. I really like them in, in the Teamer Walker deck. As, there, as like we were talking about at the end of the last video, I was wanting to add a third roll of scions in there i really like the card but as if you want to if you want to replace them with something else i mean just look at other you know basically just want to replace with other planeswalkers you can just kind of look at the other pl planeswalkers in the team or colors 
and uh, mix and match and play the, the planeswalkers that you like yourself. All right, so let's see how we do. <clears throat> we have turn four Vivian potentially. If that's the way we want to go. Oh, sorry, turn three. Turn three Vivian potentially. Hmm. Does look like a flash deck. So, just such a high probability of that thing getting countered. Using the Fable Passage, because we, we do not really want to draw any lands. And I'm activating Incubation Druid here to be able to let, let the Incubation Druid add a couple more mana. Maybe not. Unfortunately, I don't have... I has one mana short from being able to play a 4-drop there as well. Five cards in hand. Really wish we could double spell with four drops. So since Questing Beast Resolve, the most likely thing that they're going to be doing is playing Nightpack Ambusher. So I attacked with the Paradise Druid. Um, basically, the oh man, Ambush is like a good thing to play here except for against... Except for against a bounce spell. Alright, wanna play around Quench. I know that means less lands in hand to be able to discard a Cavalier. Dang. That was a great turn for our opponent. That's That was a great turn over there. Alright, well, looks like they got game one. We're not beating Ambusher.
All right, Hawkeye just had a little hairball there. He's good. Hey, Matu. Okay. So, we got four Vela Summers, three Shifting Ceratops. Those should all help. I kind of like Bone Crusher Giant here. I definitely like Vivian also. Right, if we're playing all of these, we're going to get rid of. Like, the thing is, is like playing three threes against. Um, I'm going to take out one of these Vivians. That's an ETB. Um, playing three threes against the Ambusher deck isn't exactly where I want to be. I want things to be, be able to trade with Ambusher or, or be able to get above Frill Mystic. Did the graphics change? No, it's 1080. Well, not looking good for us. Not looking good for us at all. No Ceratops, no Vela Summers. Uh, expensive hand. We already mulliganed once, though. We'll give it a try. Okay, you played against five color fires deck game one who had Fey of Wishes into Elder Spell into Fires into No Cabolas each game. You lost 2 0. <laughs> yep, like, that's magic. So, yeah, your opponents had, you know, some, some perfect cards against you there. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's a, <clears throat> it's a rough day there. So I went with Questing Beast over Vivian because with them having um, Island Forest and us seeing millions of negates last game, I thought that was like kind of like the uh, mana that they had was negate. Turn three ambusher is pretty strong. You can have double counter spell to protect it. I don't. I can't uh, cast a Vivian and ambush, so we'll just go with the Cavalier. Match is a lot easier if we draw one of our four Vela Summers. It's a lot harder when we don't have them. We're pretty dead here, though. We need to draw a Veil of Summer this turn. Okay, never mind. We're just dead. Just. <clears throat> awesome hand over there. Turn three Ambusher, turn four Mystic. There's, okay, well, 
There's no reason not to attack with these 4-4s. Four so that's kind of good for us that my opponent didn't attack with those. My heart beats in unison with the wild. With my aim and their claws, you're done. Well, we got the ambushers out here. This game's not... I guess it's not over. With them just having the one card left. Especially if we can start drawing creatures with, you know, with having the Great Henge out. Said the game was over before, but I guess it's not over. Not over yet. Especially with us having another... Another removal spell that can kill this Preserver. We just need to draw creatures. Anger only gets me so far. Hmm. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this, honestly. They could just have another preserver. Or not not another preserver, sorry. I mean another ambusher. Okay. We actually got there. Turns out Questing Beast is incredible. And Questing Beast with Domri's Ambush, real good. All right, so seeing all those Wildborn Preservers does make me want to play these Bone Crusher Giants. Maybe we go with those instead of... Maybe instead of Cavalier of Flames. I don't know. Cavalier's pretty nice, but we got to cut our, our top end down with bringing in Ceratops. Yeah, I think we'll just go with Bone Crusher Giant instead. Um, instead of a Spellbreaker. I guess Spellbreaker really doesn't do that much for us in this matchup. I mean, 
I'll just cut Spellbreaker. Play Once Upon a Time and Vivian instead. Now I'm going to go down on one, one Great Henge. Get a Spellbreaker back in here. <laughs> Questing Beast is good. Stop the presses. Hey, what's up, Zephyrs? Ugh. It's just too slow of a hand. Well, we're putting these things back. <sighs> Four of sideboard, Veil of Summer. Game two, seven cards, don't see it. Game uh, mole, six cards. Plus the game goes like seven turns, eight turns. Never see it. Game three, seven card hand, don't see it. Six card hand, don't see it. Five card hand, still don't see it. Well, I guess it's technically three seven card hands. Unfortunate. I didn't shuffle last turn because I didn't really want to put the two growth chamber guardians that we had at the bottom. I didn't really want to draw those cards. But we're going to be shuffling with Growth Chamber Guardian anyway, so we, so we can get a land out with Fabled Passage. My opponent always having Nightpack Ambusher as early as they can. The best card in their deck. Does not make my life easier. It's their best turn four card. They've had it turn four every game. Well... Game one, they didn't have four mana turn four, but as soon as they had four mana, they had Ambusher. Game two, they had it turn three. There's a Gross Spiral. And they had two of them. They had one on turn three and turn four. <sighs> oh, no, I guess they played a Feral Mystic in between. Unfortunate how bad our hands were. Uh, let's play. Let's try it one more time. Because you know we mold the five, and even if we would have kept the seven card hand, like even if we didn't have to put two back, we we were not even winning that. Like our our hands were really bad there. Ah, not tr what is going on? Play this. All right, we're gonna play one more with that early loss. I'm gonna try it one more time. So I guess we can do. So we went 0 and 1. And now here's the second. 
run. Yeah, that's that's the thing about Simic Flash. You're like, just just please don't have Ambusher in your opening hand, and can just play it on curve. Or a second one. That card is real good. Well, I think we mulligan this. It's if we don't draw another land, our turn three is pretty awkward. But we can just go. At the very least, we can have Guardian on two, Guardian on three. At the very least. If we would have drawn a land, I would have just gone with Vivian there. That's what I was hoping. Um, would, would have been able to play Vivian, put counters on the Incubation Druid, so it could have added a lot of mana. That was the goal. That's why I led off with the Incubation Druid. More counter magic or not? Nah. I don't think so. I have survived Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Oh, you want the Restoration Angel reprint? We could definitely use better white creatures. Not had good white creatures in a while. All right, let's see three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six, seven. We're fit enough to survive. I don't know. So I could just ditch all the Growth Chamber Guardians and just draw different cards. They're not bad to just, like, play an army of Growth Chamber Guardians and, you know, pump them and attack and everything next turn, though. i just ditch this Vivian. I'll do that. I don't really see them killing this Vivian that we have here. That's true if we if that's true if we draw a great henge. Could be really nice. Darn. Um, so one point off. Alright, that'll do. I was going to be able to, like, Vivian, Minus, and, and grab Ceratops or Bone Crusher Giant also <clears throat> to do the extra points of damage if need be, if, you know, if they had another removal spell for the, for the, uh, for that questing beast there. So we're playing against Golos. Haste is certainly important because having a, a bunch of creatures in play that gets, you know, that get swept up by sweepers 
isn't ideal. I think we're supposed to play flame sweeps to kill zombies. I think. But that could be just like going to too much of a late game, honestly. But our deck can go like pretty late, especially with the Great Henge. I kind of want to just cut Paradise Druids and play three Flame Sweep and a Vivian. I'm worried that's. I mean, I'm supposed to cut. I guess I'm probably supposed to cut two Grum Gullies. No, let's let's cut an ambush. Get a Grum Gully back. Okay. All right, here we go. Because mana creatures are not good against sweepers, and of course the Golos deck is all about sweepers. Hmm. How do you earn wild cards from the vault? Whenever you have, it has to be. You have to. The vault has to be 100%, but whenever it's 100%, um, a little treasure chest will show up on your screen in the top right-hand corner around where my, my where my mouse is, like around that area of the screen. Um, basically right next to like where the direct challenge thing is um, on the main screen. And... Whenever that shows up, then you know, then you've unlocked the vault, and you can click on that, and then you get wild cards. Then they show up. So if it's if you don't have the treasure chest yet, that means you're not at 100. percent You can't you cannot check your percentage in client. There's no way to. They didn't design it so you can check you can check it in client at all. So you just kind of have to be patient and keep earning new cards or if you're drafting you know you get more commons and uncommons it takes a while and then whenever the vault pops up what do you have to do to reach 100% um, each each extra each like fifth copy of a common that you acquire is one point. Each uncommon counts as three points. Each fifth copy of a rare counts as five points, and each mythic is ten points. The vault unlocks whenever you've earned 900 points. Which is kind of ridiculous, but that takes a while. So you need to open up whether in booster packs or um, or drafting. So like 900 extra commons and so on I mean you get you get the gems also but oh wait do they not count as points if you when you get the gems for them also maybe they do not also count as points maybe they're just gems I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, the vault is like when you buy a new car, they give you a water bottle. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Fetch land. Boo.
So you say you open the vault once on 15 drafts per average. What a top deck. What a top deck. What a top deck. Two very good top decks there between Realm Giant Questing Beast. Like they their last card was definitely the the other land. Crowd they're playing. It's like they drew the, the Realm Cloak Giant to kill the one questing beast and then drew Agent of Treachery to steal the other. Two really good draws in a row. Well, we're at game three now. I I felt really good about that one. I thought we were going to be winning that one. So I kind of want to play once upon a right I kind of want to play this right now in case we in case we hit like rugged highlands that we just play in tapped. No, we'll draw first. We want to find a mana creature, of course. Uh, accelerate to get to Cavalier Flame. We do need lands to get to Cavalier Flame, though. Yeah, and also whenever you're drafting, y'all are talking about like how you like to rare draft because that whenever you're drafting, if you get to like the last like five picks in a pack, and there's not really cards that you're gonna use, just take uncommons because uncommons are worth three points, where commons are only worth one point. So try to take as many uncommons as you can later on in the draft. Let's tear this place apart. You fight like a city brat. So, Questing Beast isn't the best creature to play with Flash, but besides that, it's like the best creature, so. Wait, you think nature is kind? We had to put another keyword on Questing Beast. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, add more keywords. There is wonder in a blade of grass. Bleh. I should have just exiled the mountain. Whatever. Could just play the Great Henge. Could just play Cavalier Flame. It's pretty unlikely that they activate Golos here, right? Yeah. 
I can't go Henge Ambush because this adds two green mana. So, yeah, that, that would have been the best if I could play Henge and then Ambush. But it adds two green mana. We wouldn't have a red left over for Ambush. I don't like that they have mana for Growth Spiral still. I even less like that they get to gain three life here. I was going to potentially have lethal there. They couldn't gain the three life. I think I was going to be just a little bit short, though, of lethal. Yeah, I was going to be a little short. Starting over is the only way. That hurts. The Aether Gust and everything. That was a heck of a turn five for my opponent. Gain three life, put six two twos into play, and counter my spell. And also, you know, ramp ramp two extra lands. Put two extra lands into play. It's a heck of a turn five. Tear it down. Tear it all down. Doesn't really make sense to play Paradise Druid before Flame Sweep. These Ether Gusts. Devastating. I saved four life. I thought they were done ramping. Already played their land for turn and everything. They don't have red mana, right? No, they do not have red mana. Yeah, just doing the early early stream on Sundays. The 
the Sunday matinee stream. Help out the European crowd. Hey, Landgarner. So basically, is it critical to kill this Golos? All right, kind of see if they blocked. The other problem with using the ambush, of course, is they get to play this huge beanstalk giant. What's up, Sothian? But I also just kind of want to use all my mana while we have, you know, because of the Great Henge, being able to get more cards and stuff. But if I wait... Um and use it on Beanstalk Giant, then they have to like double block to be able to kill. Cavalier of Flame. I'm gonna love tearing this place to the ground. I wonder if they have a basic mountain they can grab with this fabled passage. Watch out, they bite. He's at the end. So I got four lands in the graveyard. So if Cavalier of Flames dies, they take four. Okay, that's it. We did it. I did not think we were going to be doing it. But we, I guess we need to stop those presses. Questing Beast is a heck of a card. Mastery Orb, it's Sunday. New XP and everything. Let's crack a pack. I got all the rares, so we need Mythics. I don't have all the mythics. Mythic? I think it's a mythic. It's at least not a rare, because if it was a rare, it would just give me 20 gems immediately. So it's either a wild card or a mythic. It's a mythic. All right, there's our fourth copy of the Great Henge. That's a great pack. And mastery, what do we get? So I think I want to go blue next. Blue has Gadwick, Fay of Wishes, and Royal Silence. And, like, Royal, Royal Silence is the card that I want, the single card that I want the most on here, as far as cosmetic goes. Green has, like, Yorvo, Lovestruck Beast, Great Henge. Like, Great Henge is, is awesome. I don't really play too much Lovestruck Beast and Yorvo as much. Red actually has a lot of good cards. Slangfire, Torbrand, Fervent Champion, and Umbercleave, but... I think Royal Silence is the card I want the most, so I'm going to go blue. White. White's just... It's just laughably, laughably bad compared to the rest. Witching Well is a good common, too. White's not competitive with the rest of the colors. That's going to be the last one for sure. Um, Deckmaster is not working for you? It... As far as I know, it should be. Hey, Landgarner. 
Uh, the first, yeah, the first try, we just lost to, to Simic Flash. Simic Flash has had awesome hands. They just always had ambusher right away in games two and three, just multiple ambushers immediately. And, you know, we lost. Okay, yeah, so if Deckmaster isn't, okay, it works for you. If, if it's not working for you, you may need to just refresh the stream. I don't believe we got any free level codes for Eldraine. We haven't gotten, at least not yet. Unless there was something immediately. There might have been something like day one that they had. Healer of the Glade. This could be a tough matchup. Risen Reef. Risen Reef can grind. Can probably grind better than the Great Henge. Just gotta hope no Risen Reef over there. Hey, Lou Ferrigno. Ow. Speaking of grinding, Questing Beast is good at that. Grinding down the opponent's life total, that is. <laughs> Your first M20 draft game was opponent turn three reef. Turn four. Um, uh, I know the card you're talking about. Um, uh, Scorcher. Yeah, the red, the three elemental creature, so like uh, Scampering Scorcher. I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a rough first draft. All right, well, they didn't get to Risen Reef because they got stuck on two lands. So we got the first one. Um, I don't really know what we want out of these cards, honestly. You know, like, Flame Sweep doesn't kill a lot of the elementals. It kills some, but not a lot. I could play, like, Bone Crusher Giant, I suppose. I think I kind of just want to just go. I think Vivian Arcbow Ranger could be a big part of this. Pumping up our creatures, giving them Trample. Obviously, the Great Henge allows us to play into a late game. We need to draw two lands. One land for the Beast, one land for the Henge. Do you think that... That guy right there. Whoa, we get to play first? That's cool. Doesn't really help us with our draw two land. Do you think they were walking walking by and they they were like looked over there and they're like, wow, that's a pretty great henge. I should go check that out. And that's where the name came from. That's probably where the name came from. Yeah, you don't see that very often, the opponent choosing to draw first. Might have been a misclick. Might have... Some... Kind of strategy. That I'm not sure what it is. Opponent wants me to get stuck on lands. So wants me to go first. Yeah, Mana Burn, they got rid of Mana Burn, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Not, definitely not 20, but like maybe like 15 years ago or so. Yeah, Mana Burn's just not a thing anymore. That is a lot of mana. I let them have this guy or engineer. I don't really want to take a turn to ambush the guy or engineer, though. I mean, maybe I should. 
I do that. Hmm. Ah, oh, whatever. You can have the mana for. You can have the mana for a turn. We got a quest to go beast up. Rolesk! Rolesk, cool. Proliferate the questing beast. Do it. Proliferate the questing beast. No, no, they didn't. They did not proliferate questing beast. It's rude. If we don't have enough mana to cast the Great Henge, we're just going to have to make bigger creatures. that so fable passage will be on top next turn no I don't think Golos or field of the dead will get banned in standard but I wouldn't be shocked considering they just completely ignored those cards I mean well field of the dead that is completely ignored field of the dead uh, with throne of Eldraine didn't print print anything for it I wouldn't be shocked but I don't expect it to Vivian. No. This is where we need. Uh, Why does this thing have a counter on it? I don't even know why that thing has a counter on it. Spark double? Oh. I guess they couldn't spark double Risen Reef because then they would die to the questing beast. They needed to gain the three life. Makes sense. This is where we could draw a Cavalier. And Cavalier will ditch all these lands. Let's draw a bunch of new cards. Yeah, is it Flash is kind of a thing. And yeah, they don't have enough blockers with all these 3-3s. Three Dang. Wow. All right. Rule Henge. Uno. After going 0 and 1. Another pack. Can we get another mythic? How lucky are we? Two for two mythics? Oh my gosh. I think we're two for two mythics. 
That is so lucky. All right, Circle of Loyalty. I'll take it. I only had, like, one of those. Ah, keep on just hitting the play button. But I have to go up here. There we go. All right. 2-0. Oh. I'm glad we redid the league. Yeah, Deckmaster is on. Everyone lost all of their badges. Twitch is broke. Twitch is all messed up or something? Hmm. Doing this because we may need a... Yuck. I really wanted to land, but I was going to say we may grab like a tap land, like a sacred found or a sacred ground, stomping ground, or like a stomping ground. Hmm. This is kind of rough. So I don't want to shuffle right now because we just put four spells to the bottom and we need to draw a land. So I'm going to just lead with the castle and see if we draw a land here. <laughs> I wanted to not tap land. That's true. We, we moved five turns closer to drawing land. There. Red Fox. <laughs> yeah, he's not been good. Not been the best draws. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel. And worms rule. Welcome to the feast. So I guess I go beast, attack them, put Oko down to two, and then next turn Vivian can finish off Oko, even though they'll probably turn the questing beast into a 3 3. bit of a different deck here. Paradise Druid, Lovestruck, Beast, Oko. Your new look okay, they're not getting rid of the Beast. They got their own Beast. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. So ticking up so Incubation Druid can get a counter and also so I Vivian mind. can How you've grown. have five loyalty. And this kills Oko. They're, they don't have a block they can make to save Oko. So we get to just, because of the trample, 
So we're still trading with Questing Beast and Oko. And like, instead of minusing to kill Oko, might as well make it so they have to attack Vivian with a lot more. And Incubation Druid now gets to add three. Oh, right. I could have just attacked them. Right. <laughs> oh, I did everything else right. Yeah, I should have just attacked them and then redirected damage to Oko. Crap. Too busy talking. Yeah. So, yeah. I should have attacked them. I need to hone my skills. <laughs> I, I attacked them the first time and redirected to Oko. I just... I was just kind of thinking through all of those moves and... Didn't do that correctly. Okay. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, potentially eight if we want it. I think I want to go here, here, do this before they get rid of that, and play Druid. Maybe it's better to shock in it, just go shock Spellbreaker. Maybe that's better. In case they, they like bounce Growth Chamber Guardian, I want at least a blocker for this 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I, I don't understand why Oko has a plus one and not a minus one either. I don't, I don't understand why this is not a minus one. I don't have any answer for that. I, it doesn't make any sense to me either. This land, we are all connected. The land shall conquer you. Well, Nissa probably is better. Nissa is probably better than Growth Chamber Guardian. I will admit. One man short of just like just, just unloading my hand and just playing everything. Can't adapt and play these other two. feel a little bad if we draw the Great Henge and I just unloaded my hand. It's like, it's kind of my only way to pressure Nissa though, but I don't even know if that's realistic pressuring Nissa, to be honest. You know, we could potentially attack with all the creatures the next turn, be able to adapt to the two Growth Chamber Guardians. You know, we have four, four fours attacking Nissa next turn. That was the problem of playing the two Growth Chamber Guardians to try to get aggressive, though, is that I don't have... I couldn't just adapt one Growth Chamber Guardian and have d better blocks there. GG. Walk with me. Sing with me. I will enlighten you. I think a little merriment is in order.
Oka is just a huge problem. My card advantage source, my main, you know, my top end is, of course, the Great Henge. Oko turns the Great Henge into a 3-3. Three, three. It's just a problem. Best way to deal with it is attacking. That's about all I got. Growth Chamber Guardian, Spellbreaker, those kind of cards didn't look real great there. I'm going to try B Bone Crusher Giants instead of Spellbreakers and play a Ceratops. I'm going to try taking out Spellbreakers for Bone Crushers and a Ceratops, where Ceratops is kind of pro Oko, kind of. Oh, I don't even know. Maybe I'll play a Vivian. Another way to get more cards. Don't think I want Flame Sweep. Or Veil of Summer. Let's try this. Yeah, the reason why I said kind of with Ceratops is because, yes, while, while Oko cannot target Ceratops whatsoever because of the pro blue, Oko makes green 3-3s. Three threes. So, you know, Oko can just make two 3-3s three threes and, you know, Ceratops only trades with one 3-3 three three and then Oko just keeps on going and, and doing more things. And so ceratops doesn't necessarily match up that well against oko because of a wall of three threes a five four can only get through one three three I feel like I have to play every card twice. <laughs> yeah, Shimmer Dragon can be standard material. Yeah. I think so. Um, I think the big question is whether I just play Bone Crusher Giant or hold up the two damage here. If I would play the Bone Crusher Giant, I would tap the Paradise Druid. I'm, I'm definitely playing Rugged Highlands because I want to play Cavalier of Flame. And yeah, I, I decided to just go attack and hold up two damage instead of playing it as a 4-3. <three. laughs> I just want to play Shimmer Dragon and Smothering Tithe. That is pretty awesome. Could be viable. You never know. My opponent just like holding up counter magic or something. Just sitting over there not doing anything. Just plain draw go.
I don't want the Great Henge to be countered. Something like Thrilled Mystic or something? I probably should be playing an Incubation Druid there. Ah, glad I didn't. I'm sorry, all of y'all that are having trouble with Twitch. Nothing looks different on my side. So I, I don't know what, you know, I, I just don't know what's going on with, with your problems and everything. And all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Oko is really good. I think they're blocking with the wrong creature there. I think Gilded Goose is more valuable. I mean... I could try going double Bone Crusher Giant and trying to kill this Oko before playing the Great Henge. Yeah, that's that's the problem. I I could play Great Henge, play Incubation Druid, but then they just kill the Great Henge. They can have two three threes now to block. Keep shelter in my stewardship. Rise, my elemental friend. Surely you see the humor here. All right, this thing just blocks anyway. Master Umbreath's not too bad. I see how it is. Oh man, I really hope that doesn't mean they have another Oko. <laughs> Please don't have another Oko. They didn't. I don't know why they wouldn't block with Leafkin Druid unless they just had another Oko, but even still, like, even if I have another Oko, I'm just, I would, I'd rather have that other Oko in play than Leafkin Druid, but yeah, I will enlighten you. yes, they do have another one. I invite you to change your ways. Well, the Behold, hey, Cavalier Flame doesn't have any abilities. It got, it got Okoed. It has no abilities.
the Elko Flame. <laughs> I know, so sad. I just want my Great Henge to, to do cool stuff. It's possible my opponent doesn't realize that they can get rid of this Great Henge. They didn't get rid of the, the Great Henge. Whoa, they did not get rid of the Great Henge. I guess I should play Ceratops first because I draw an extra card that we maybe loot away. Yeah, we would have we would have had that extra four to loot away. Should have played Ceratops first. My heart beats in unison with the wild. Hmm. Well, that was awesome. I can go haste also with Cavalier. But it's probably better to leave some blockers back and just protect Vivian and stuff. I have three lands in the graveyard. As far as triggering... Cavalier of Flames is concerned. Oh, come on. Ugh. Ugh. Come on. Ooh. By the lake went too fast. Alright, we'll just make, make the obvious play. Oh, I should have ticked up Vivian first. No, I should have ticked up Vivian first. No. No. I forgot about that trigger. I forgot about that trigger. I was just talking about that trigger. Hey, what's up, Ganaris? Thanks for the tier one sub there. I appreciate that. Our second of the day. Thank you so much there, Ganaris. Well, that, that could have gone better. That could have gone better. I 
Kind of punted this one. I will aid you. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Okay, deck. Give me some more creatures. Creature, creature. Anything that's not a land. <laughs> he had mono. Yeah, or sorry, he had main deck Jace against a mono blue mill. That's mean. That'll count. To redraw. Bertalux! Alright, cool. Another deck tech. Can do. Thanks, Bertalux. Alright, so I can attack. So if I get rid of Wicked... If I do Wicked Wolf... They sack this, keep Wicked Wolf alive, but then that's eight trample. Should be lethal. Oh, the Paradise Druid doesn't attack. No, that's not lethal. Ugh, what am I doing? It's almost lethal. Ah, should have just killed Nissa. I thought about that too. I don't know, like, I was like, like in my mind. Oh, is it still? Oh, it was exactly. Okay, I thought they stayed at one. I don't know, what is going on? I thought they stayed at one. I guess the incubation, maybe, I guess I didn't count the incubation druid going to two. Man, I just kept flip flopping. I was like, okay, we can't. I was like, all right, well, Paradise Druid is going to be lethal. No, Wicked Wolf is not going to be lethal. And then and then I was like, I just went back to, okay, well, Paradise Druid, that's lethal. So I'll, I'll kill Wicked Wolf. And then I killed Wicked Wolf. And then immediately I was like, wait a minute. No, Paradise Druid, I just, I just thought about that. Paradise Druid is not lethal. And then, uh, and then, uh, so, you know, I just make the attack. I guess I counted five and two. I thought I was gonna be. I thought they were gonna be staying at one, but it was six and two. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> yeah, when you punt, but it was the it was the, the right play anyway. You think you punt, but you don't. Uh, I don't know. We had a late. We had a late night last night. Then now it's today's an early early day. I don't. I don't know. I was kind of all over the place there. So my apologies, but I still made the correct play, I guess, with that Dahmer's ambush. So it all worked out. So I have Agent of Treachery, so I could have Veil of Summer to protect against Agent of Treachery. But nah. Yeah, I was just, I was just making it more suspenseful for y'all. <laughs> that's, that's what I was doing. I mean, obviously, my opponent not turning the Great Henge into a three-three is really what helped us win that. 
but almost threw that away by not taking up my Vivian first. That was that was something that we would have easily won if we would have ticked up Vivian first. Okay, well, we'll see what our opponent has over here. I kind of like what we got going on here of Vivian start ticking up on this Paradise Druid. Revel with your king, wild and sovereign, and one bite, and all your cares are gone. Come on. Why are you so slow, Arena? I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. We're fit enough to survive. They could turn Paradise Druid into a 3-3 now with Oko. Do it. Do it. Uh, Let's broaden your existence. They made the easy play. <laughs> you were lucky to get that close. Did they have Ether Gust last game? Yeah, they did. My my, how you've grown. Well, I'm Paradise Druid in here because Paradise Druid is hexproof to be able to block for Vivian. They can't get rid of that Paradise Druid. It's obviously devastating. They could just steal my great hench now. I invite you to change <laughs> Ooh, at least they way. all right, so they figured out that they can plus one it, but they really should have minus five and just stolen my great hench. They're missing land. So they really should have minus five that. Like, you can't steal artifacts? Exchange control of target artifact. Oh, you control. Oh. I was like, but it says exchange control of target artifact. Okay, good. So they can't steal it. Well, not good. My great hench is a 3 3. So that part's not good. Um. I'd get out of the way if I were you. My bad. Yeah, I know. Why am I spending nine mana on a 3 3? Just a generic 3 3. It's a bad trade. So hostile to the truth. So 
So if I I could I could have played Grum Goalie and then Growth Chamber Guardian and you know Growth Chamber Guardian gets the counter and I get a new one. But the problem with doing that is Grum Goalie is a 3-3, Growth Chamber Guardian is a 3-3. Having a bunch of 3-3s isn't really ideal in an Oko world. I think so I'd rather have the 4-4. Four four. I guess it at least makes them sacrifice their food and tap the Wicked Wolf to kill this thing. I've been struggling with mana. Kill the Paradise Druid. You've made a dangerous enemy. I'm pretty sure they have another Oko. That would be unfortunate for me. Alright, well now things kind of change how I can turn these both into 4-4s. Four With Vivian's tick up. I definitely consider just playing like the new Vivian to kill Wicked Wolf. But I think it's better, you know, like after doing this. I think it's better to... Fit enough to survive. Keep the other Vivian uh, out here though and uh, force them to spend Maybe resources on getting rid of it. Or not. Okay, if so, if my your all right. So somebody in chat said that my opponent should not have attacked with the three three and the two one to force me to minus three the Vivian to kill the Oko. Um, actually, I could have just ticked up one because of Vivian giving trample, turn this into seven trample and and. Uh, I mean, I guess Oko isn't quite dead, but is fairly close to being dead. If we do that. Ooh, did not sacrifice. Hmm, interesting. All right, they're kind of stuck on mana. Vivian Arcbow Ranger out dueling Oko, Thief of Crowns. Yeah, I guess they probably didn't have the third Oko. All right, our second run's going better. We're 3-0. Got our three packs. Let's keep on trying to get some more packs. Hey, Baloney Pony. Is Twitch working better for y'all now? See, so we got a couple hundred more people in here. I mean, it's nothing that I can do about it, but, you know, y'all were saying that the Twitch was real buggy earlier. I'm assuming with more people in here that it's working better now. Hey, slave. Mountain. Okay, it's smoother now. Other issues are fixed. Good to know. Mountain Plains. Do we have the return of... <clears throat> oh, no. It's Interplanar Bacon. No, it's Just Guy. Boo. I was going to say, do we have the return of Feather? Have any of y'all been playing Feather? I just haven't seen any Feather since rotation. I know one person over there on YouTube... Was asking to see some 
some more feather. They had feather built from before and wanted to know what I kind of thought about feather. You want me to face yeah, I haven't seen like much feather at all. You can play your cards in some speed. Opponent. This might be a bad idea. Probably is. Uh, let's just... So I, if I go Incubation Druid, then I definitely get to Cavalier of Flame. I like getting more haste damage in, though. That didn't go according to plan. We played against it once in best of one. Yeah. Reckless Rage. Not having Reckless Rage is rough. Uh, I'm not right now, Blade. I haven't played any ranked matches in a while. I haven't played any ranked matches in like five days or something like that. This weekend we've been doing these med this metagame challenge, how it's up here this weekend. Okay, so our opponent is playing Jeskai Planeswalkers. We'll go with the Ceratops, the Vivian. I assume that they're playing Fires of Invention. Most people playing Jeskai are. We'll get the Cinder Vines up in here, too. I don't know if we need to be crushing bones. I'm going to cut Grim Gullies. I kind of want to cut creatures that die to Clarion. One ambush, two druid. Here we go. Okay, there's been a fair amount of feather and best of one. Okay. I'm going to play some best of one tomorrow, for those of y'all that like best of one. Best of one day Monday. I know for sure I'm going to be playing Mardu Control. A viewer sent me a Mardu Control list that I've been playing in Best of One, so I'm going to try that. Sounds cool. Um, I'm going to play either Rakdos or Jund Sacrifice. Yeah, we played the Jund Sacrifice in Best of Three. I may play, may just try that in Best of One you know, with Corvold. Or I may just go straight up Rakdos. We'll do one of those two. Didn't you already try this opponent? That's more like it. I feel like we already played this game. This is hardly my worst defeat. So that's just three mana draw card. That's all that card was. Schedule. Spend three mana, Here. draw one card. Not done yet. Even now. Not done yet. Go Vivian. Not have to put like another thread out on the battlefield for a sweeper. From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is better. I'd get out of the way if I were you. I think my best creature that I have This is hardly my worst defeat. In my sideboard, I think right now is Bone Crusher. I think I just have like Bone Crusher. Yeah, because I, I put in all the Ceratops in the deck, as far as Vivian's minus five goes. What's up, Zoltan? This isn't a fight you can win. No, I am not making this up as I go. I 
I don't know exactly what the point is of playing the Fae of Wishes. My, my, how you've grown. It doesn't block. It's only a matter of time. I want to attack for one. Got to get that aggro. That two mana one four, aggro. Two mana one four can't block. Ugh, that's not a great card. Yeah, questing beast against super friends feels good. If you're playing super friends, you gotta get your justice strikes in your deck. That's your card to kill questing beast, justice strike. Hey, what's up, Samantha? Two more packs. Good, evil. I'll side with whomever brews the best tea. And a mastery tree thing. All right, working towards that rural scions. <laughs> he forgot the article 14. Uh card text on questing beast oh my gosh we got another mythic we are three for three with oh, mythics goodness. with packs wow this makes up for whenever we opened up you know like day one of um throne of eldraine we opened up 175 packs we have the youtube video for it and we did a horrendous job opening mythics it was just rare after rare after rare after rare today three for three mythic for the person that was asking about the vault earlier, this is what the vault looks like. We are 100% vault progress. Four for four? Ah, uh, no. We finally got the gems. That's why I knew it wasn't a rare with those other those other ones, because like whenever it's a rare, it just automatically goes over and just gives you gems. That gave us... So opening a pack was 1.1% towards the vault. And that's what it looks like when you crack open a vault. We need more of these. I'm stocking up. Now we're up to five Mythic Wild cards. We're stocking up. All right, four wins. Let's keep it going. If you have 200% vault, then it just, you get double, you know? Like, so you can, you can sit there and not open up your vault if you want to just be able to look at the percentage. You can just sit there and not look at it. And, you know, you can have you know, multiple thousands of percent. It's just for every 100% you get, you know, that uh, reward of one mythic, two rare, and three uncommon. The vault doesn't show up unless it's ready. Like, as you see, like, I, I opened it there and it went away. It don't, it doesn't show up on your screen, on your client, and you can't see it unless you have 100% and you're, then it will show up. It doesn't just show up all the time. My client really needs to be reset. But I also don't want to lose the luck. We're, we've won four in a row here. I don't want to jinx it. But if you're if you're at 200% and you open the vault, I think it just it just opens up all 200%. I don't think you can I don't think you can like go to 200% and then open up 100 of it, you know, get like one vault rewards, but then so it can stay on the screen. Um, I think if you open it, it's open. Oh, you can? Oh, never mind. Well, all right. What I just said there was incorrect. The reverse of that is true, I guess. My bad, my bad. Uh, 
No. Could have not attacked. Um, well, we opened up 175 packs on the first day. And I don't know exactly how many other packs we opened up since then before I completed the rares. I also used rare wild cards on different rares whenever we had them. Whenever we need rares for different decks and stuff. So also used wild cards. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think my opponent is casting the the that thing, Murderous Rider. They're going to be casting Swift End. So I just went to attacks. I don't want that. I did not want them to Swift End Vivian. Yeah, the decks are right there. Exclamation point decks. That's where you can see the deck list. That's why it says here today's exclamation point decks. So yep, if you want to see the list, that's where they're at. The other ones that we'll be playing today. Hmm. I guess it's a little risky. To play the Vivian. So if I do that, they kill Spellbreaker, they kill Vivian. Now I can make both Spellbreakers 5-5s, five so they can both tussle with the Lovestruck Beast. Gross. My heart beats in unison with the wild. With my aim and their claws, you're done. That was just a perfect turn. That was a perfect turn. Nature will take back what rightfully belongs to it. See, so yeah, I can kill the 1-1, one, one, but then how do I ever kill the Vivian? I'll return. I could tick up and attack, but they just simply don't block, and then kill my Vivian. The Great Hinge is really good. That's what my deck wants to do. I got I'm playing three Great Henge.
So I could play like the one Cinder Vines. Ugh. To destroy the Great Henge? That's kind of gross. All right, so I think I want to play some Veil of Summers because of Murderous Rider. And then I'm going to play Bone Crusher Giants, and, like, they probably have Trophy also. Um, probably Noxious Grasp. You know, like, they could have, like, those cards also. Um, and then playing Bone Crusher Giant because of Edgewall Innkeeper and how good Edgewall Innkeeper is. It's so a really awkward mana base here. Hmm. So even if I find... Even if I find a 2-drop with Once Upon a Time, I can't cast it. I'm hoping to kill this Paradise Druid with Bone Crusher Giant. Good hand over there. Good hand over there. I kind of liked all those cards I put down to the bottom. I want to shuffle those cards back to the top. Sometimes whenever you shuffle, it changes your graphics. I mean, they're just sitting on removal. The thing is, is I have seven cards in hand. I need to get cards out of hand. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. Not an ideal situation here. You 
You haven't seen the last of me. Really wanted to land there to be able to do both parts of the Bone Crusher Giant. I mean, obviously, we just want, we want land so we can start playing more than one spell a turn. Like, the thing is, my opponent is just on four cards. Game's not over yet. Come on, Vela Summer. Darn. I definitely feel like they have Noxious Grasp. My best ch chance of them not having Noxious Grasp. Because I could have gone Grum Goalie, counter, you know, and then and have Veil Summer up if I would have drawn that. But, but yeah, like they just had so much removal and my hand was just so clunky. They had a lot better hand, hitting land drops, Paradise Druids, everything like that. And that's all that was. They had a much better hand. All right, that happens though. So, four and one. Nothing wrong with that run. We'll take that. We get five packs. Still a very good run uh, for Gruel. Gems. Gems. Not gems. Mythic. Love it. <clears throat> so we've done a great job opening Mythics today. Four Mythics on the day opened up. Real quality day there. Okay. So our deck did pretty well overall. Um, you know, so like we went... We went 0-1 that first time, and then 4-1. That's a really good, solid day with the competitive metagame challenge there. The Domery's ambushes were just amazing. Really got, really glad we got a fourth one of those in. Um, worst part about the deck is probably still the sideboard. I don't have any like great answers of exactly what to do with the sideboard. It's just our, our cards are pretty weak, you know. Like Bone Crusher Giant is is fine, but it's not spectacular. But it is at least a you know it's a creature and everything works kind of well with the deck. Honestly, maybe Bone Crusher Giants should just be in the main deck, like instead of Grum Gullies or Spellbreakers or something. Like honestly, maybe we should just be playing a bunch of Bone Crusher Giants in this deck, like where it's a creature for the Great Henge, but also gives us cheaper removal as well. 
Um, but you know, like just green and and red, especially red, is a really weak sideboard color right now. And we could play like Fry, I guess. But like there, you know, like especially in a deck like this that wants to play a lot of creatures, there's there's not a really a lot of good sideboard creatures. So that's where our deck compared to other decks um, is going to be. That's where our weakness is going to kind of show there. Um, but okay, there we go. That's Gruel Henge. We should move on to our next deck. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And like before, uh, leave some comments. Let me know how uh, how you like the deck and also how, how are you doing with the deck. Um, you know, after, like I said at the beginning of the video, um, I've had a lot, you know, a lot of people trying out the deck and everything. Give me the feedback. How's the deck going for you? What do you like? Don't like about it? Did have you found most importantly, if you're playing the deck or just you know a gruel deck like this, have you found um, any really good sideboard cards? Anything that I'm missing here uh, that the deck should have in the sideboard? But that's it. That's Gruel Henge. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.